NBA champions. Wow, that has a nice ring, doesn't it? After seven long battles and after nearly choking, we emerge victorious, beating the odds to win it all. Steph Curry balled out, averaging 32, 5, and 8, winning his first ever Finals MVP. But that season is now in the past, and it's time to move on to the next one. Pau Gasol and Kyle Korver announced their retirements after their long careers. Gasol was an amazing bench center, played valuable minutes, and someone that James Wiseman looked at as a mentor. As for Kyle Korver, um, remember when he hit that shot that one time? It wasn't like a three or anything, but it was a it was a nice shot kind of. So that was kind of cool. He also made one All Star game, so that's kind of nice too. This offseason, we also traded CJ LB for two second round picks. These picks really aren't too valuable, but getting two second round picks for a player who doesn't do anything is a trade that I would love to make more often. With our first pick in the draft, we went with AJ McGuire. He's a solid shooter and down low defender, but besides that, he doesn't bring much else to the table. For some reason though, my scout thinks that he can be all NBA, but I see him as a guy who can play when Wiseman gets tired. And that's about it. Next we have Neil McCaw, he has kind of a funny sounding name and he's a decent shooter, I guess. Then we chose Uros Golob, another funny sounding name, he is a Eurostash player so he's gonna have a year to develop before joining us, I actually do think he can develop into a solid backup point guard. Finally we picked up Lazaro Santiago, he is a decent shooter who can score from any part of the court, he is actually a higher overall than McCaw and Golob but I don't expect him to play too much this season. I am probably going to send Santiago and Macaw down to the G League. They are both incredibly raw prospects who don't offer too much to us right now. Sometimes G League players have a tendency of booming out of nowhere, so I'm hoping one of these guys can be a diamond in the rough for us. After a lot of thought, I have decided to bring back Kelly Oubre. I feel like $15 million a year for 4 years was a pretty fair price as he will be an excellent guard coming off the bench. I did this mostly because of how he balled out in game 7 of the finals. I also made the change in moving his secondary position to point guard. I found that he is a pretty underrated pick and roll ball handler and I find myself scoring with him way more often in the half court setting than I initially thought he would be. I also think his size can make him a great defender and a mismatch down low. Next we brought back JaVale McGee! I brought him in just because he is a former warrior but to this day McGee is still a solid lob target, rebounder, shot blocker, and he is still pretty decently athletic for someone of his age. Next I saw Myers Leonard, but I don't want to get banned, so I decided not to touch him. Our final signing was Tyler Johnson as a backup point guard. Johnson is 89 layup, 75 dunk, and 84 three point. This does make him an all around scorer similar to Alonzo Trier. So next I just want to talk about our bigger players and see how they progress. Curry stayed the same, which is good given that he is 33 years old, but he does basically have 99 3 point ball control and layup. Clay Thompson ended up going down 3 points in every single stat. He is still a good shooter and a great defender, and given that he still has all of his same badges, he's going to be quite effective this year. For Chris Middleton, none of his stats actually change, but I'm pretty okay with that. We have definitely reached his ceiling, and we know how good of a player he is, but he has proven that he can definitely be the second guy on a championship team. James Wiseman jumped up 6 overall points. He saw major boosts in every single offensive and defensive stat. This is basically giving him an A in every single category and he is only in his second year in the league. For some reason, Eric Pascal is developing much better than I thought he would. It's going to be a really tough decision this season to decide if I want to keep him or to let him go. So this is kind of just a throwaway game, I'm not really trying too hard here, mostly I'm just messing around with my rookies, but this is also a good chance to talk about the series and where it's headed. In a normal series, I would end it after winning a championship, but I usually expect it to take a few years to win the championship, not just winning it in the first one like how we did here. But because I do love this team and I do think that it has a lot of potential, especially for my young guys, I do want to keep this series going for a few more years with some new goals in mind. First of all, I want to try and boost the legacy of Steph Curry. Most people do see him as the second greatest point guard of all time just behind Magic Johnson, and I want to do my best in this simulation to actually push Curry past Magic and making him one of the top 10 greatest players of all time. 
It is definitely difficult, but his scoring and assist numbers are incredible, and Curry is on pace for very high career totals. I also do think just with a few more All-NBA nominations, a few more championships, and possibly another MVP, we could make him the greatest point guard of all time. The next thing I want to do is develop the new era of the Golden State Warriors. This dynasty of Curry, Thompson, and Green is coming to an end, and I want to pass the torch from them onto our new core. For this new core, I am hoping to make it of James Wiseman, Kelly Oubre, Eric Pascal, Chris Middleton, and OG Anunoby. These five guys are already capable of making the playoffs, and many of them haven't even hit their developmental peaks. In a few years, this core can already be contending for another championship. And that isn't even counting the fact that Steph Curry and Klay Thompson still have another good five years of dominance in this league. So my goals are to try and make Steph Curry the greatest point guard of all time while being able to pass the torch onto the new look Warriors. In the far future years, I am probably going to sim through more seasons and go a little less in depth as those guys aren't the main point of the series. And if you ever know, my NBA definitely gets weird after a good five years or so. Like I said, teams I rebuild in the future aren't going to be like this and I doubt we're going to be winning more championships in our first year. So we're going to have more time to cover growth and build the team. This does lead me into talking one more thing about the channel and where I do think I'm headed after this series. Obviously I do plan on finishing out these Warriors as I do enjoy playing and making this so much. And I do have future teams planned for this similar type of series. Obviously I plan on working with teams that aren't nearly as developed as what this Warriors one is. I have a few teams I'm thinking about but I'm not completely sure which one I want to do yet. Besides that, I've also just been brainstorming a few type of challenge videos that aren't so much in this type of rebuild, but a much, um, it's a much kind of quicker style of this that just poses different NBA challenges, and I'm trying to do something that's a bit more unique that I haven't seen before. And besides that, um, a few days after this gets uploaded, I'm actually working on a bit of an NBA documentary that should be coming out within the next hopefully within the next weeks. Stay tuned for that as that's something that I have planned out and that I'm incredibly proud of. But yeah, so anyways, this game is pretty boring, so I'm just gonna leave it here as no one cares about the Summer League anyways. Our rookies did okay, but for a lot of the time they were actually struggling to score and create their own shot, which is kind of scary given that this is the Summer League. For the most part though, I do plan on sending all of these guys down to the G League just because I don't think that they're going to be doing much on the NBA level. Like I said in an earlier episode, I am doing way more in-depth rotations compared to last year. My goal is to have at least 3 players over 80 overall on the court at all times. Along with this, I am also having at least 1 but preferably 2 starters on the court at all times. And finally, I do have it planned out where two of my main three stars are always going to be in the game. This means Curry, Middleton, and Wiseman. At least two of those three main offensive weapons are always going to be playing. This pure amount of star power compared with the depth that we have should make us unstoppable. And just to show how good this team is, I've been able to do all that without even talking about Klay Thompson or Kelly Oubre. Both of these guys are 17 point per game scorers and I haven't even had to mention them yet. In the next episode, I am going to be going over my expectations of this team and where I think each guy will land. We have a lot of star power and this can definitely win us games, but I think with this amount of weapons, we may see some guys drop off in points. Last thing I want to look at really quick is the power rankings. For some reason, we are at number 4 despite how good of a team we have. I do have a feeling that this is going to change pretty quickly. Alright, so that is the end of this one. It turned out a little bit longer than I expected, but we did have a lot of items to discuss in the offseason. Like I said, stay tuned as I should be uploading a documentary within the next week or so. I definitely plan on continuing out this Warrior series, so hopefully that can be up within another week or two. That's all for this one. Take care, guys. 